My name is Amy Tipling and this is my informative speech on the wrench. Specifically the monkey wrench. For most people this is just a very common garage tool but there's much more to it. This is probably one of the greatest inventions that our country has created and I'm very excited to show you the history of this little piece of metal. The largest takeaway from the speech should be the inventor of the monkey wrench himself. The inventor was wildly uncredited and didn't get anything other than his own satisfaction from creating this tool. The inventor was wildly uncredited and largely forgotten because of the fact that he made this tool in 1835. At that time, slavery was still a thing, and he was in fact a factory slave worker. So creating this invention during this time period meant that he wasn't given the same rights as he would have if he created it in the future. One important thing to note, though, is that there's a very large argument and many different ideas as to who really invented this tool. I'm solely going to focus on what I was taught and what I have learned from research. Even if it may not be the exact inventor, the overall history of the inventor is still the same. He was a factory slave, he didn't get to patent his own invention, and it made it work a lot easier for himself and a lot of people in the future. This man may not have been the actual inventor of the tool, but he was definitely one of the first to help shape the tool future for the world. So Solomon Merrick may have been the one that created the wrench. It was created on August 17th, 1835 in Massachusetts. He worked as a factory slave and came up with this idea to make his own work a little bit easier on himself while working with machines in the factory. The idea of this tool was to give it more grip and torque so that he could move and unfasten a lot of the bolts that were on his machines. He, was also, he also made it so that he didn't have to use a bunch of wrenches like this one to have to keep going back all the time to get one that fit like a smaller one or even a bigger one. So he created an adjustable one, the monkey wrench, which is what I'm focusing on, to make his life a little bit easier. But after his invention, the other factory workers used it quite often, but the people that owned the company actually ended up patenting it, and they called it the monkey wrench. Now, the idea of calling it the monkey wrench and not a screw wrench or just an adjustable wrench like today is was to mock the man that made it. Monkey at the time period that this wrench was created was a very derogatory term and they used it for its inventor because he was a black man but they named it to mock him for his color and I just think it's one of the most awful things you can do to a person after they invented such a tool like this. But that is where the name came from, and a lot of people are trying to get people away from using that name nowadays and go strictly onto screw wrench or an adjustable wrench to get rid of the entire derogatory term. It's, it's not great. But the wrench itself was created to kind of take these wrenches out of business. It was causing too much of a hassle for a lot of factory workers, so he made one like this. Now, the adjuster for it is up here. The grips that he created were just like these ones. The wrench that he made really does look a lot like the ones we have today, but his was obviously quite a bit bigger. He actually had, instead of like a nice plastic handle like most have, it was a big wooden handle and it was about this long, so decently over half the size of a normal uh, adjustable wrench today, but he created this so that it was adjustable like this, so it could go around any nut or bolt and it would give him more leverage to easily loosen or even tighten anything that he was working on in the machines. So the only difference from today's wrenches are, is the adjuster. The old ones used to be right in the middle of the handle and you would have to kind of like turn it all the way around instead of just having an easy one that you can use just with your thumb. The whole point of the wrench stated at Handyman's World 
is that it can be adjusted, it's like such, bigger and smaller, to grip various nuts of sizes by spinning the screw right here, this screw, to move the jaw back and forth so that it can fit any shape. The sole purpose of this invention was to make the daily work of one factory man's life easier so that he didn't have to grab a new wrench every time he needed it. This wrench being invented opened a whole new world for tools. The future was endless after this was created. Many people saw or heard of Merrick's invention and took off with the idea. They made more forms of it, such as the socket wrench in 1863, which was the same idea, but it was more equipped with mechanisms that measured the amount of torque or turning effort excreted by the wrench on the nut or the bolt, to quote Britannica. So the socket wrench, like this one, got a socket on the end, was invented for invented and based off of Merrick's wrench, but it was much, much stronger because it focuses the energy used while twisting on the wrench itself and not on the bolt. So it doesn't put as much effort onto the bolt, it puts it more on the tool, so it seems easier for the person using it. In conclusion, this was quite a lot of information, a lot of history, and while the wrench may seem a bit boring, there's a surprising amount of history in these. Overall, no one may know who the true inventor of this wrench may be, but that's not what's important. What's important is what we know. It was created in 1835. We know what great tools of the future came from it, such as socket wrenches and much more adaptable and lightweight tools than what he first created. And we learn just a little bit more about our country's background and some of the small things we may take for granted. Thank you.